We've heard rumors about Apple revolutionizing TV for years, but so far all we've seen are incremental upgrades and a price drop in the existing Apple TV. Well, earlier this month, we may have gotten our first glimpse at what Apple thinks that revolution is going to look like with the announcement of the brand new Apple TV, complete with a totally redesigned operating system, tvOS. The official release of the Apple TV isn't until October, but we got our hands on one and today we're gonna tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the fourth generation Apple TV. Apart from a little growing, there's not much different with the externals of the Apple TV. It now measures 35 millimeters high, up from the third generation's 23 millimeters, but it keeps the same footprint as the last generation, measuring in at 98 millimeters wide and 98 millimeters deep. The Apple TV also got a bit heavier, weighing in at 425 grams. On the back of this new Apple TV, you'll notice that some ports have changed. The familiar power Ethernet and HDMI ports are still there, but gone is the optical audio port and the micro USB port, which has been replaced with the USB-C port. The remote for the new Apple TV has been completely redesigned and now includes a button to activate Siri, microphones to hear you, and a touchpad for navigation. This new remote also decided to ditch a replaceable battery in favor of recharging through a lightning connector located at the bottom of the remote. Getting inside the new Apple TV proved easy enough. All it took was some prying with an opening pick to release the plastic clips. Good news, no adhesive. Our first look inside the Apple TV was a little uneventful, just a large EMI shield held in place by some torque screws. Knowing that something better lurked underneath, we broke out our Protex screwdriver set and a few screws later, we find that the EMI shield is also a bracket that clips into the lower panel and a heatsink. With the EMI shield bracket heatsink out of the way, we get our first look at the logic board. On the board, we see Apple's A8 system on a chip that has two gigabytes of SK Hynix LP DDR3 SD RAM. And on the other side, we see the 32 gigabytes of SK Hynix NAND flash storage. Last to come out of the box, a great big chunky heatsink with a cute little power supply board tucked away inside. We noticed a distinct lack of cables connecting the power supply to the logic board. We're theorizing the power is either transmitted by magic or through the heatsink screw post. And that's not all. We're giving you two teardowns for the price of one. On to the new and improved Apple TV remote. With a little heat and prying, we finally crack open the remote. And I do mean crack. Just a heads up, if you're taking your new Apple TV remote apart, be warned, there is a cable attaching the two halves. If you want to separate it correctly, use a spudger to gently disconnect the cables before you pry it all the way apart. Live and learn. On the rear case, we see the brains and the heart of our magic TV wand. The logic board is home to the Broadcom touchscreen controller also seen in the iPhone 5S, 5C and the iPad Air, the ST Microelectronics Ultra Low Power Arm Cortex M3 MCU, and the CSR 1010 Bluetooth radio. Last out of the remote is the 3.78 volt, 1.55 watt hour, 410 milliamp hour battery that supposedly lasts up to three months on a single charge. Dead batteries in TV remotes will soon be a thing of the past. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The Apple TV fourth generation got a eight out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, modular construction and only a few major components simplifies repairs. The separate power supply with no cabling to worry about is handy, and there are only standard torque screws throughout. But on the downside, everything important is soldered to the logic board, meaning replacement or board level soldering is required to solve problems with your ports. And that's our teardown. Don't forget to be on the lookout for our iPhone 6S and 6S Plus teardowns later this week. You can check out the complete Apple TV teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images over at ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.